Once upon a time, about 245 years ago, there was a country that was born on individual freedoms and liberties, and it believed in uh, the free market system and diversity of thought was welcome. What happened to that country? Yeah, you know, I was even thinking this morning, Tim, it's July 5th now. You know, we all celebrated yesterday, July 4th, independence, celebrated the signing of the Declaration of Independence. But what did the founders do on July 5th? What did they do after signing the document? They had to stand up and fight. They had to stay involved. It took time. It was another seven years before they would officially win the war. It was another 11 years before we got the Constitution. Uh, we need to recognize that uh, we need to celebrate our independence, but we also need to dig in. It's time for us to have what Lincoln called an increased devotion to the cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion. And those two things you just mentioned, whether it's that freedom of thought and expression or our freedom of movement, I mean, all of these things that we used to really value, um, it is time for us to say no to the censors. It is time for us to say no to the regulators that wanna micromanage our lives. And the idea that Facebook would say that a Congresswoman who is standing mm -hmm. up for the Bible a Congresswoman like Lauren Bober, who's a champion in Congress for the Declaration of Independence, is somehow uh, giving you extremist content. I mean, this is disgraceful, and we've got to absolutely go for free market competition here. I love the name Getter. Had to be a Southerner that named this, com <laughs> uh, this company. Uh, but I love the fact that we've got this competition coming in. But we as individuals need to start choosing that competition over the censor companies that don't appreciate freedom of thought. Uh, you saw those comments from former President Trump at that rally over the weekend in Florida. And of course, he was yeah. here in Texas a few days before that uh, with the border with the governor. You know, uh, I think the reason his message resonates is because it's something that a lot of us think and believe every day. Is that am I right about that? I think you're absolutely right. You know, yesterday I, I spoke in a wonderful church here in California. I'm in California today. And I, I'm telling you, man, even as I talk about some of the same things, you could see the heads nodding. You could see, I mean, in people's hearts, they love this country. They're sick and tired of this country being lambasted and all the negative and people only talk about the bad and the ugly. They forget the fact that every country deals with challenges. And, and I could tell in these people's faces, they're looking for that patriotism that Donald Trump brings. I love the fact that he's having these rallies. I think it's a great contrast to what we have in the White House right now. When he gets up and goes on and on and on and, and talks about the major issues of the day instead of ignoring them. And then we have a White House that's only talking about a vaccine that is not the answer to COVID. Ivermectin and these other uh, treatments are the actual answer. The contrast between what we actually have in the White House right now and what Donald Trump represents, even in these rallies, is huge. And it's reminding Americans what they want in a leader, uh, both in the White House, but in these governor's races. And let's not forget those local races, the school board and city council as well. So I hope Donald Trump keep, keeps on having the rallies and encouraging Americans and firing us up to go stand for the Declaration of Independence. Rick, back to the extremist content thing with Facebook. Yeah. Uh, our founding fathers kind of had that same thing. This is why they printed so many pamphlets and all, because the crown tried to shut down the speech in America. This is nothing new, is it? That's right. And, you know, later in that year in 1776, uh, when we had lost battle after battle after battle, we're told that uh, we won the war because of George Washington's sword and Thomas Paine's pen. And he said in an American crisis, uh, you know, you got your sunshine patriots out there and your summer soldiers, but the patriots are the ones that will stand up even in the face of all of these things and will stay strong through the entire fight. And we need more Americans to be willing to do that. And when I say fight, of course, I'm saying be willing to stand up for truth. You know, they said lives, fortunes, sacred honor. Sacred honor is what's at stake right now. We gotta be willing to speak truth no matter what it costs us. Too many Americans are willing to go with just opinion. They don't care about truth. That's why God's word is so important. Getting into God's word, studying God's word so that you know truth, you can then be salt and light in the community. That's what the founders did. And because they were steeped and they were grounded in God's word, they launched the greatest nation in the history of the world. Now we need to get steeped and grounded in God's word and we can restore that nation.